Fast API embraces this concept of asynchronous programming. But to really understand asynchronous programming, we first need to understand the limitations of synchronous programming. Let me show you the breakdown of a request of a real world production grade application. This will give us more insight on what is happening whenever a request hits our server. So if you see carefully, if there is a network call, 70 to 80 percent of the time in, is invested in resolving that network call then comes our database our database is the major bottleneck in any request response cycle so the database definitely consumes a lot of time after that it's our application server or in-memory database everything comes after that now let me take you to the application performance monitoring tool for fast api tutorial if you see the cpu percentage utilization at any point of time you will notice that it doesn't exceeds 5% 6% like that the main crux is that CPU is a very powerful resource it can compute in nanoseconds so the most of the time CPU is sitting idle our request is majorly waiting on either the database or network calls or other IO bound tasks let me take you to the machine that passed fast API tutorial and let's evaluate what is the speed at which CPU works. So LS CPU grep find out this megahertz keyword. CPU has this frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, 2419 megahertz, which is 2.4 gigahertz, which indirectly means that CPU can perform a micro operation in nanosecond. Remember these data points because we are going to utilize these data points in making a decision of using asynchronous programming concepts in Python. Let's say that three network calls, basically three requests hit our web server. The first request is forgot password slash user ID. The second request asks for a particular blog, blog slash the ID of the blog. The third request is a very simple request. It just says that add these two number. In terms of the turnaround time, request 1 takes the most amount of time. Request 2 is a bit shorter than request 1, which is just 400 milliseconds. Request 3 is the smallest of them all. It takes just 200 milliseconds. Now let's see a breakdown of request 1. First of all, it comes to fast API. Fast API does some bookkeeping work. It evaluates what is the route that I need to forward this request to. Then we take the user's email and try to search if that user already exists in our database. If he or she already exists in our database, then we are going to send an email to that person. Next come the task of generating token. Since token can be generated by the CPU, it takes a very small amount of time. Then comes this task of communicating to the SMTP server. This also involves network calls. So this takes quite a bit of time. Finally, fast API returns a response. One thing that you would be able to observe is for the most amount of time, the thread which is processing it is sitting idle. When we are trying to search in the database, it's not the responsibility of the thread to process it. And it takes some milliseconds of time, which is like thousands of times slower than what CPU can do. Even more than thousands. If we take into considering this sending email, Again, the thread which is processing this process, it sits idle. It has nothing to do because this is a completely different task which is offloaded to the network drivers, which communicates to the SMTP servers. So again, the thread is sitting idle. Imagine these two times, these two heavy work were not there or the thread which is acquired, it's set free in these two intervals. Then the worker thread would have a lot of time in that time the thread could process other things this is the crux of asynchronous programming these tasks are considered as messages or events they are put in a queue event loop keeps an eye on these tasks whenever they are completed event loop calls the thread back to process further if these tasks are not completed the thread is set free to do other tasks I think you might have got a gist of what I'm trying to say. It is basically letting the thread set free so that the threads can perform other tasks in that particular time. In the very similar way, I'm recording this session while I have put rice to be cooked. Now let's evaluate this program. What we are trying to achieve is we are trying to send 10 network calls 
to this UI land point and then we are simply asserting whether the response status code is 200 or not for this we are making use of the request module request module being a synchronous module all the network calls are synchronous that is the network calls happen one after the other once we get the result of one network call then only the other network call is sent to that server the program is very simple let's execute it and try to see its runtime performance so python space the name of the module that we want to execute it will make 10 network calls the time it took on my machine is 74 seconds you would need to do a pip install request to actually utilize this request module now let's see the asynchronous version of the very same code this time we are going to use the AIO HTTP module which is asynchronous version of the request module this particular function make request is responsible for making one HTTP call to this URL endpoint this time we are creating the session using AIO HTTP module which provides us the asynchronous network call capabilities again we are doing the exact same thing we are awaiting till the point we get a response code of 200 in the main function we are utilizing async io to create 10 tasks to basically make 10 network calls using aio http and we are waiting until this until we get a response from all of these 10 network calls this code is as simple as that let us execute this code and see the total turnaround time To execute it, you might need to install AIO HTTP module. Now let's run this file. See how quickly all the nine, all the 10 tasks have been scheduled. Now we are waiting for them all. In my machine, it took just 11.9, which is 12 seconds. So you can see the time difference, basically the speed optimization that we achieved using asynchronous code. It's not we are making parallel request. It's just that the threads which were earlier being underutilized, now they are being utilized to perform other tasks. So it kind of gives us this sense that we are doing some parallel processing, but not. It's just that we are utilizing the time more efficiently.